Turkey ended search and rescue efforts in the rubble of buildings that collapsed as a result of Friday's strong earthquake in Aegean Sea. The death toll crept up to 116 in the western city of Izmir and the Greek island. The quake, the deadliest to hit Turkey in nearly a decade, injured 1,035 people in Izmir and 137 were still being treated. It said search and rescue efforts at 17 damaged or collapsed buildings had been completed and teams were clearing the rubble. In addition to the 114 people killed in Turkey, two victims of the tremor were teenagers on the Greek island of Samos. More than 2,790 tents were set up for temporary shelter and more than 10,222 bats were distributed in the area. It said 22 boats had sunk and 43 others had run aground, of which 40 had been rescued as a result of the quake. Life in Vienna returned to something like normal as Austrian authorities investigated whether a 20-year-old man who fatally shot four people in an attack claimed by Daesh group had any accomplices. Officials said the suspect identified as 20-year-old Kuchtim Fetch Zulai had a previous conviction for trying to join the Daesh in Syria and had been released in December. He wounded more than 20 people in nine minutes before he was killed by police on Monday night. Much of the capital remained shut down well into Tuesday, with authorities saying only in the afternoon that they hadn't yet found any evidence of a second asylum. Schools reopened on Wednesday. The Daesh group claimed credit for the Vienna attack. The claim of responsibility was published through the militant group's media arm, AMAK. It didn't elaborate on the attacker's ties to Daesh and had similar wording to pass opportunistic claims by the group. Saudi Arabia has announced it will ease some of the contractual restrictions giving employers control over the lives of some 10 million migrant workers. The reforms will allow the private sector workers to change jobs and leave the country without an employer's consent. The Saudi government said it was seeking to improve and increase the efficiency of the work environment. Right Group said the current kafala of sponsorship system leaves workers vulnerable to abuse and exploitation. One activist described the reforms as significant but cautioned that parts of the system remain in place and called for it to be abolished fully. Those workers will no longer be required to obtain their employer's consent to leave or change jobs. They will be allowed to travel outside the kingdom without the employer's approval. They will also be able to apply directly for government services and their contracts with their employers will be documented digitally. A North Korean man who crossed the heavily fortified border into South Korea was taken into custody on Wednesday, according to the South military. The man was first spotted crossing the barbed wire fence at around 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night, according to local media, and was then found about 10 a.m. the next morning on the eastern side of the demilitarized zone that divides the Koreas. That's according to the South's Joint Chiefs of Staff, who said in a statement that an investigation is being planned. It comes as South Korea resumed tours to the southern part of the demilitarized zone on Wednesday, after the tours were put on pause in October last year after an outbreak of the deadly African swine fever in the north. However, Unification Minister Lee In-yong made no mention of the North Korean man when celebrating the tour restart. Lee called for restoring relations with the north and a recovery of inter-Korean hotlines that were severed back in June. The two Koreas remain technically at war because the 1950 to 1953 Korean War ended with an armistice rather than a peace treaty. The United States formally left the Paris Agreement, a global pact forged five years ago, to avert the threat of catastrophic climate change. The move long threatened by US President Donald Trump further isolates Washington in a war but has no immediate impact on international efforts to curb global warming. There are 189 countries that remain committed to the 2015 Paris Accord, which aims to keep the increase in average temperatures worldwide well below 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, ideally no more than 1.5 Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. A further six countries have signed but not ratified the pact. 
Scientists said that any rise beyond 2 degrees Celsius could have a devastating impact on large part of the world, raising sea levels, stalking tropical storms and worsening drought and floods. The Paris Accord requires countries to set their own voluntary targets for reducing greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. The only binding requirement is that nations have to accurately report on their efforts. The United States is the world's second biggest emitter after China of heat-trapping gases such as carbon dioxide and its contribution to cutting emissions is seen as important. In recent weeks, China, Japan and South Korea have joined the European Union and several other countries in setting national deadlines to stop pumping more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. President Donald Trump falsely and prematurely declared victory in the U.S. election Wednesday morning and accused Democrats of trying to steal the election. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. This is a major fraud in our nation. We want the law to be used in a proper manner. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. But results from some key states are not likely to be known until later due to this year's unprecedented volume of mail-in ballots. But speaking to his supporters just hours earlier, Democratic opponent Joe Biden said he felt good about his chances and stressed that the election wasn't over until every vote was counted. We believe we're on track to win this election. Democrats' hopes of a Joe Biden landslide fizzled early on Tuesday night as Trump took early leads in Florida, Georgia, Ohio and Texas. Projections on election night pointed to a Trump victory in Florida, a state seen as a must win in his quest for the 270 electoral college votes needed for victory. His strong performance there was powered by improved numbers with Latinos. There were few surprises among deep red and blue states, with Trump taking conservative strongholds like Alabama and Tennessee, while Biden captured the Democrat-leaning Connecticut and Massachusetts. Fox News and the Associated Press also projected Arizona as a win for Biden. Biden now needs the so-called blue wall states of Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, which helped propel Trump to victory in 2016. But mail-in ballots there were not processed until Election Day, and vote counting could potentially stretch out for hours or days. MPs have backed a four-week lockdown in England to combat coronavirus, which kicked in at midnight. Boris Johnson saw off a rebellion by Tory MPs opposed to the move with the support of Labour. The government won the vote by 516 to 38, a majority of 478. The Prime Minister told MPs a second lockdown was needed to contain the surge in COVID cases, but rebels warned it would wreck businesses and lives. The lockdown includes the closure of pubs, gyms and non-essential shops. It will replace the three tiers of regional restrictions across England for four weeks until 2nd December when the tiers will be reimposed. Argentine soccer great Diego Maradona is recovering in hospital after surgery to treat a blood clot on the brain, the former World Cup winner's doctor said late on Tuesday. Maradona was admitted to hospital a day earlier, where dozens of his supporters waited outside for news. His personal surgeon, Leopoldo Luque, gave a positive update on the 60-year-old's condition. The surgery lasted approximately one hour and 20 minutes. I was able to evacuate the hematoma successfully and Diego tolerated the surgery very well. And the truth is that Diego is awake. Everything is good, very good. Maradona won the World Cup with Argentina in 1986, but has suffered with poor health for several years. He's not been seen in public since last Friday, the day of his 60th birthday, when he took charge of a soccer match involving the local team he currently coaches. A team of Sri Lankans raced to save a pod of about 100 whales beached off the country's southwestern coast on Monday. The short-finned pilot whales began to beach themselves just before dusk at Panadora, south of the capital Colombo. Uphil Ranjit is a fisherman who spotted the whales. I don't know why this happened. It has never happened before. This is the first time I've seen this. All of them will die by morning. Men and boys waded into the surf, trying in vain to push and pull the whales back out to sea, ignoring a 24-hour coronavirus curfew. 
Officials from the Coast Guard and Navy also arrived to help with the rescue, which went on late into the night. But by morning, it was feared that they would likely not survive. It's not clear what caused them to be stranded. The reason why whales beach themselves is largely a mystery to marine scientists. However, whales which travel in pods sometimes beach themselves as they follow a leader and will gather around an injured or distressed whale. Just two months ago, several hundred whales also beached themselves in Australia, one of the largest mass strandings ever recorded. The COVID-19 vaccine developed by the University of Oxford could present late-stage trial results before the year end, but it is unclear if it will be rolled out before Christmas. Oxford Vaccine Trial Chief Investigator Andrew Pollard said working out whether or not the vaccine worked would likely come this year, after which the data would have to be carefully reviewed by regulators and then a political decision made on who should get the vaccine. The Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine is expected to be one of the first from Big Pharma to be submitted for regulatory approval. A vaccine that works is seen as a game-changer in the battle against the novel coronavirus, which has killed more than 1.2 million people, shattered swaths of the global economy and turned normal life upside down for billions of people. If it works, a vaccine would allow the world to return to some measures of normality after the tumult of the pandemic. Pollard said the U.S. Food and Drug Administration had set the bar for a vaccine being at least 50% effective, a level that would have a transformative impact on the pandemic.